Welcome everybody to this UNIFI webinar about Team Developer 6.1 and the first sneak peek look at Team Developer 6.1. I'm your host, Martin Tetz, and <clears throat> I will also do the presentation today, show you um, the new features of TD6.1 and do presentations of the features with the product itself. Um, for questions, I would like to ask you to use the Q&A button on your WebEx toolbar. This makes it easy for me to view all the questions and go through them. I will probably go through all those questions at the end of this webinar. So welcome again, wherever in the world you are. This webinar is about Team Developer 6.1, but initially let me talk a little bit about Unify, what we are doing, and what uh, Unify is selling. Unify means more than 30 years of development tools and database products. We have a data server product, which was the first Unix SQL database. We have a Excel first Unix 4GL development tool, which is a terminal product. Um, we just released a new version of that. We have SQL base, a first DOS and Windows SQL database. And SQL Windows, our first Windows 4GL. Team developer was the first Windows 32-bit 4GL then. So a number of industry first things that we released and are still um, keeping um, alive with new versions and very attractive product releases all the time. Other divisions of Unify include Access One archiving solutions. If you're interested in that, go to our website and see what we can do for your archiving. Dages e-discovery solutions, Oracle Forms to Java migration. So if you have old Oracle Forms applications, you can move them to Java and Lotus Notes to .NET migration. These are the other areas of business Unify has to offer. I'm Martin Tietz, I'm the Unify product manager. I'm more than 10 years with Unify and I'm doing the product plans for Team Developer, SQL Base, Excel, Data Server, and NXJ. And now let's start with the webinar itself. Team Developer 6.1 benefits. That's kind of the first thing to talk about. And that's also kind of the agenda that I will be doing today. Um, what we have is a new high productivity IDE. We have a new enhanced high usability GUI controls. You will see all those in a few minutes. And powerful new .NET integration to leverage investments into both TD code and other .NET code. So basically, if you have written TD code in the past that you want to provide as .NET web services, then you can do that um, with Team Developer 6.1. And of course, you can um, leverage .NET code that has not been written with Team Developer from within Team Developer applications. Team Developer 6.1, the IDE, much improved Active Coding Assistant, actually to totally rewritten to uh, perform at high speed, even with very, very large applications. So you will be impressed if you would try that with 6.1. Outline tabs, you will see in a moment what that is, has actually been requested by customers and um, is implemented in 6.1. We have a new doc code documentation tool and a lot more on the IDE to tell you. On the GUI side, a WPF charting control. That WPF doesn't mean so that it's only um, for .NET. This con new control is available for Win32 and .NET. We have a new grid summary bar to allow easier move of uh, table windows to grids, name toolbars, and more things there. On the .NET side, and actually, I won't be talking about the .NET side today too much keep that for the next webinar. We will have web services providing and consuming on .NET. We will have when net exception, local exception handling, .NET 4 debugging, and .NET 4 compilation. So let's talk about the first thing on that list, that is the new IDE. The new IDE provides higher productivity and more fun to work with every day, and you will see that in a minute. New tools for documentation and code analysis. 
So you're getting things that allow you to document your applications or your uh, products that you create using Team Developer, and you have new tools to analyze your code. So here is one of the the IDE, the new IDE on the right side. You see that image. And let's go through the IDE enhancements in detail. We have a new color-coded source code editor, as you can see in that screenshot, that allows you to easily read and understand your code. We have outline tabs. You see the outline tabs on top of the um, outline on the right side. You see all these tabs for the different windows and, and source code areas that allow you to quickly change between um, source code pieces and between, um, let's say, window previews. The background text and group box caption is displayed in the outline, though you don't get confused by um, strange names of the background text, like background one, background two, and you don't know what that contains. So that is being displayed in the outline now. The Active Coding Assistant, like I mentioned before, has been completely rewritten for um, fantastic speed. It is resizable and does more things, offers more um, features when uh, showing values for you. And you know, expect Active Coding Assistant to also work with very, very large applications. That has been an uh, issue in the past. The attribute inspector has been enhanced with a new messages tab. You can see that on the screenshot on the right side as well. So every control you, you have selected, the uh, messages tab shows you a list of available messages for that um, control. And a double click on that message let <coughs> inserts that message in the source and allows you to program at that position right away. Quick default message navigation. If you double click on a control, you go into, right into the source and you edit the default message, which for a push button, for example, is um, click. New tools. We have a new documentation tool that creates documentation for the entire source of your application. We have a orphan code detection tool that finds code objects that have not been used in your application, so you can easily clean them up. And then productivity enhancements in the IDE. We have go to definition and back control G, G shift control G, so you can easily go to the definition um, of a, a class, for example, and then back to the instance with this new um, keystrokes. And then productivity enhancements requested many times var plus plus and var minus minus kind of keyboard macros that allow you to quickly enter um, code without typing a lot. And I will show you that a little bit later. Multi-step undo redo has been requested quite a lot as well. So here you go. So the IDE has been or is being enhanced a lot in Team Developer 6.1. And you will be seeing that actually now. So let me start Team Developer, and let me open an application that has something in it. So here we go with Team Developer 6.1. And you see that it's quickgraph.app. And one thing I want to show you is the colored source code here. You see the uh, language statements in blue, comments in green, and then the um, string literals in red, for example. So this is one part of the new IDE. The outline tabs now, if you go onto a window for main, for example, you see that it has opened um, a tab for the windows of my application and then for the uh, window that, that I selected. So I can quickly navigate between pieces of source code here, and uh, that makes navigation inside your source much easier, and it is really fun you know, working with TD 6.1. That's what I experienced during learning 6.1 in the past months. 
outline tabs. So then the background text and if you look at the contents here, you see that uh, background text, you see the actual text of the um, background six, for example. And if you go there, then it shows the text again. And that, that same works for uh, group boxes. So you, from the source code, you see what kind of <clears throat> you're working on, if, um, you know, what, what group box you are uh, moving around or you're working on. So that's easy to, to easily detect the things you <clears throat> that you need to move around the source. Active coding, assistant speed, and resizable. There's really a lot to, to, to show on active coding assistant. Um, let me... So the speed... You just need to believe me that you know that is much better, and you can resize the thing as you like. And then the behavior of the coding assistant had changed a little bit. That it doesn't do the second um, bracket right away. You can enter now the all the parameters, and then at the end the closing bracket. The attribute inspector that you see here already already for um, this object. Let me see what object that is. I have that WebEx stuff in my view now. So here. Um, oh, okay, that's the window. So the message actions section for that window, and here are the messages that are allowed for that window. And you see those messages that have, that are actually there in the source code are highlighted, so you know I've already coded things for this message. And I could now go ahead and add some create here and see that that now becomes um, highlighted as well. Let me remove that. Default message navigation, if I go into the layout of a window and I double click on a button, for example, then I go into the same click of that um, object, which is um, kind of nice and easy and intuitive to use when you are developing code. So now have a look at the new tools of TD 6.1. First, the documentation tool. Um, for this application now, I want to create the, my documentation. And I have that new thing here called create documentation. And this allows me um, to include the APLs as well that are part of this application, or, or you know, include or exclude as, as I, I wish. And then there will be a subfolder called doc below the um, application directory where all the documentation will be placed. The documentation is being created using HTML and there's a default layout. And if you look at the default layout, you can also create your own layouts and then influence the way how you, the um, documentation is generated. Okay, let's see if that worked. Okay, now. So, there still seems to be an issue with that in the beta version, but you can, at least you can see the um, what we are trying to do here, and that of course will work in the coming releases. The orphaned um, code detection tool. I will open another um, application for that. So it takes a little second on my laptop to load that. don't want to save my code here. And now I can run. I do an analyze for orphaned code. And you see the orphaned code um, output there. 
And what you see here is that in, in this application, there's just one variable, number and chart type, which is um, orphaned, which is not being used. So you could, if, you, if I click on in here, then it moves to the code and you can write, go ahead and delete that from the code here. So that's a <clears throat> little example for the um, orphaned code detection tools. So other things in the IDE. Um, contents of the form window, quick graph. If I do go to declaration here, it goes to the custom control class. That is the base class of that object. And um, control shift G goes back to where I have been coming from. So very easy go and back implementation. Then I, um, message actions, let me do a code line, another one here. Let's say set nvar plus plus. See, and that converts into nvar equals nvar plus one. Or if you do nvar minus minus, that converts to nvar equals nvar minus one. Okay, so this is a first look at the new IDE of Team Developer 6.1. Let me close TD 6.1 now and go back to the presentation. A few more things um, for the IDE that are kind of related to the IDE debugging enhancements. .NET for XBUB debugging. Before we couldn't do, um, we couldn't debug XBUB, so browser-based WPF applications on .NET 4, because Microsoft changed the debugger library from .NET 3.5 to .NET 4 massively, massively, and we have now adopted for that change. We now have a stack window for .NET apps, so you can see what uh, functions and um, things your application is going through when debugging. Enhanced messages window that gives you more information about what's going on, you know, the sender and things like that. And a new current executing line indicator, which is kind of um, an arrow that shows what line is being executed in the source code, which works nicer with the new color-coded um, source code. And we now have hover over UDV examination. So during um, debugging, you move the mouse over a UDV, and you will see the values of that UDV displayed. So TD 6.1 GUI controls. That is actually the next section of my presentation now. We continue to give you powerful new controls and enhance the existing controls. And many of these enhancements are, of course, things that you have been requesting from us. This is for you to create very rich and high usability applications. And we, are adding, we have added internationalization for worldwide application sales and deployment. So the new GUI features, this is an overview. We have a new WPF charting control. We have new name toolbars, and that's actually the screenshot that you see on the right side here. We have an enhanced grid control with a new grid summary bar that helps you to move table windows to grids and a new grid data import feature. Now the data import export is complete for the grid. We have an enhanced tab control. We have three enhancements, a calendar including week of the year, and a style function to minimize and maximize the ribbon bar. And for internationalization, we have a new flow direction attribute to support right to left languages. So when you type Arabic, usually the text flows from right to left instead from left to right, like we are used to in um, Western Europe or in the Americas. The new charting control. The graph that you see there is part, it has been created with the new charting control. Replaces the quick graph control that has been used in the past. It imports all quick graph properties. It has a new property dialog itself. Provides all quick graph methods. So existing code should convert very smoothly. 
and it works on Windows 32 and on .NET WPF. So no limitations on the platform here. And we have added additional an additional new charting API that you can use to leverage the amazing capabilities of this new new control. The new charting control has many two-dimensional and three-dimensional charts, stack charts. You can have multiple data sets per chart to create overlay charts. Charts can be interactive. You can zoom them. You can rota rotate them. And then you can also uh, print them and save them into a file if you like. So that's a very powerful, very powerful, nice looking control and <clears throat> also a lot of powerful functionality behind the scenes that you can leverage there. Here's the list of um, functions of the new chart control. So it's an impressive list of, I think, 82 methods. Set chart star. Um, you will soon have the chance to look at that and work with that yourself. So there's <clears throat> things like in um, printing a chart, copy chart to file, which allows you to save a, a chart in you know, various file formats from PNG to Excel and I think XPS, which is kind of the Microsoft PDF competitor. Name toolbars. Name toolbars are being defined in global declarations. Name toolbars can have buttons and separators on them. Buttons have actions that you can define and program. And there's a new API called Style Create Toolbar, which allows you to create toolbars at runtime. You're passing the name of the runtime, um, the doc state, and if you like, the exact X and Y position of where you would like the toolbar to be positioned. The enhanced grid control. You see that on a screenshot, that new summary bar at the bottom there? Every column can have a summary value, maximum, minimum, sum, or average. And you can switch that on in attribute inspector, or you can do that programmatically. So all the settings are available in the attribute inspector for the grid and also as uh, grid APIs which is style grid use summary row, which switches on the summary row for the entire grid. And with style grid set summary column, you can then set a specific column to display <clears throat> the sum or the average for a uh, column, for example. More grid enhancements. Grid columns. You can now easily drop a column on a grid in uh, preview. That was kind of tricky before. That was like a one or two millimeter white space that you could use to drop a column on a grid, which is now nice, nicer to do. Value button columns can now be true or false in value. And there's a new API for that, star table define radio button column. And then <clears throat> there's additional grid APIs that we added. Star grid data import, imports Excel, XML, um, comma separated values, text into a grid. And another function called star grid set row height which sets the row height at a percent value of the initial value, which has been requested because the row height of the grid had been um, slightly different to the row height of table windows. So you can adjust that yourself. And the enhanced tab control. Here you see the tab control on that screenshot that allows to have uh, multiple rows of tabs on a control. You switch that on in Attribute Inspector, and you have two new APIs for a tab. Both have been requested on the forums, actually. Sal tab, add page X, adds icon and tooltip to a dynamic, dynamically created tab page. So if at runtime you create a tab page and want to add an icon and a tooltip to it, you can do that now. And Sal tab get name allows you to retrieve the name of a tab based on the provided tab index, which is more in line, allows you to work more in line with how tabs worked in the past um, and makes the transition easier for you. Tree enhancements. New message, stem context menu, which traps the right mouse click on the tree control. So you can now react on the right, on the right mouse click on the tree control. And new APIs for the tree control. There's a um, 
method called Zal Tree Reset, which resets the two control to empty or only design time items. So you can choose how, to, how you want to have the reset work, <coughs> flush everything, or reset to design time items. And then Zal Tree Item from Point actually returns the tree age item of a given position. So you can send the mouse position to that function and it tells you on what tree item the mouse is on, which is very useful as well. Date picker enhancements. What you can see there is we, you can switch on weak numbers in Attribute Inspector, and we know that weak numbers um, are mostly the same worldwide, but can have slight differences depending on certain uh, years, and that will be um, configured or worked into this, so you will have the right week numbers depending on the area you are in. And there's a new API function for that as well. Well, file date week number returns the week number for a given date. More GUI. You can maximize and Minimize the ribbon bar with two new APIs, Zal Ribbon Maximize and Zal Ribbon Minimize. Application internationalization using the new flow direction attribute to support flow from right to left. So, at this point, I'd like to show you several of these things that I've gone, gone through here. The new GUI features of TD6.1. Let me start. G6.1 again, and show you the new charting control a little bit. So this now is using the old quick graph sample application to display the new uh, quick chart control. And basically what you have here is a form window that displays the charts, actually two charts, and you have several options to change those charts. Those options are a very small subset of what you can really do with the, with the charting control, but it, that is the first example. And you can see here we have that indication <coughs> here up in the, in the menu bar currently on what platform we are running on. This will actually change for the final version. This will go to, into the right lower bottom, bottom where you have things like caps lock and things, and there we will show if it's Win32 or .NET, I think that makes more sense. But for now, this, you can see that here. So, um, you know, just letting this application run and hmm. interesting. It shows in. Uh, Design time, not at runtime. Okay. Don't know what that is now. Used to work before. So let's try it again. Hmm, interesting. This must have to do with WebEx that certain things don't show up um, if they're not compiled to .NET 4. Hmm. Well, we will debug that and fix that, of course. Then let's go into this application. I hope that one works nicely. This is actually an application, a new sample application that shows you most of the new chart API that is available and lets you play with that. And you can see here's the um, a new chart control has been dropped here, and there's a number of um, parameters, properties that you can set here. One thing you can do here is open quick graph properties, and you get the new property dialog, which allows you to choose from what the new control has. You can change to hmm, interesting. Well, you get the idea, but need to find out why that doesn't work in WebEx. 
let me run this and hope this will show in WebEx. So this is a .NET application now. So what you can do with this control here is define several um, chart groups or um, data areas. Let's choose area 3D for the first chart group and line 3D for the second chart group. So you can have several data sets that are being displayed. And with configure chart, you should be able to draw the chart. <coughs> oh, and it shows up, so that works, yeah. If I <coughs> switch on enable, enable animation, then it will actually be drawn in a you know animated fashion. If I press configure chart again, you will see that it draws nicely now, kind of animated. So <coughs> I've been using two rows, uh, two arrays of data actually here. One is that area graph, the other is that line graph. Now you can of course go into the details like the chart title, you know, provide a value here. You can say the foreground color should be shall be blue, font area size 20, configure chart, and you will see that will be inserted. So this is a number of things that you can do within your charting control and this application actually allows you to figure out what it does. And a few things that I show you here is now you can um, rotate, move the chart around, and then also zoom in, zoom out. So many interesting things that you can do with this new charting control. So next thing is name toolbars. This is the application in global global declarations. I told you we have a new thing called name toolbars, and you can see there's like three toolbars defined here. <clears throat> and thus, this toolbar then has um, toolbar buttons, and the toolbar button has actions. And that's the same for everybody here. And you can have um, a menu separator in between. So at runtime, this looks like this here. I've created the three toolbars now. Now these toolbars are moving around freely. You can de you know, design and use them as you're used to from, from the TD IDE, actually. And of course, you can also now go ahead here in that code. For example, on them create, I want to create another bunch of toolbars. Just copy that code and execute that again. And now I get <clears throat> a lot more toolbars that I can move around here and have on my screen in my application. So this is the new name toolbar feature. Then we go to the grid control. Let's open Summary bar demo. So this one here actually is a grid control with a summary bar that allows you to find out what this thing does. And in this case, the grid itself is pre-configured, I think, per attribute inspector to, to have a summary bar and to have, a, on the paid column, have a total value. Now let's go back to the uh, to the layout here and see an attribute inspector if that is true. So you see here summary bar enabled yes. And then if you go into the outline contents of the grid um what was it paid paid column aggregate total. See, and that's what, what, where you define that. That's the design time thing you can do. And now this application allows you also to check out what you can do at runtime. So paid total we have. We can change that to paid average now. Um, and we can add an invoice date max, for example. 
And currently that is a, you um, refresh that with the three populate, we are adding actually a, a new API to that to trigger a refresh programmatically without doing a repopulate here. So at runtime you can add additional columns that should be part of the um, summary bar. Let's have a little peek at that code here. PB, add summary row, and what that does. Oh no, that's commented out. PBZ. So there's a side grid set summary column, and the grid is um, grid sum, column number seven, and the desired attribute is a sum um, summary column in this case. Okay, so you can do all this in Attribute Inspector at design time and at runtime in um, in your code, of course. So um, next thing for the grid is grid export import. Let's have a quick look at this application. It is very simplistic. You can load <coughs> data from the database, export that data into an Excel file, import that, you know, import that into the grid, and of course empty the grid. If you look at the code. Toolbar, PB export, SciGrid data export. That was available before. Now we also have this guy here, SciGrid data import, which reads the data in this case in Excel format. Load from DB just does a style table populate, and the reset, just a style table reset. So very easy, but shows you what it does. So load it from the database. Now I want to export this data. Let me check in the directory if that file is there actually, which is now the um, grid stuff. Here is grid.xls created at 9.29 at 5.39 PM, which is now. So that has been created just now. Let me open Excel and show you that data. It's a real Excel file that if you press save, doesn't come up with, this is really a HTML file or something, no, it's a real Excel file. Now going back to the application, we empty the grid and now we import the data from the Excel file. So this is grid data import. Then, for the next thing, let me just create a new app, which is the <coughs> enhanced tab control. Let me show you that. Let me create a new form window. And on the form window, I will create a new tab bar. And in Attribute Inspector, I will say or switch on multiple rows equals yes. So here we go. And then let me go to the outline. Add a few tabs. And if I make that smaller here, then you see it will overflow onto the next um, row, which is the new um, enhanced tab control. And then let me add a um, calendar control, a date picker. I do have the WebEx tools floating around here all the time. So I need to move those around, so that's why I'm a bit I'm a bit slow here moving things. Um, date picker. So date picker in attribute inspector. Show week number equals yes. And then you see the week number appearing there. And 
Let me just run this at runtime so you see that it's working at runtime as well. Shows the weak numbers on the left side here. The okay. So calendar including week of the year. And I think that's what I want to show you for GUI features today. Let's move back to the presentation now. Let me tell you a few of the new language features of TD6.1. We have enhanced.net so compile and evaluate support. We have a new API called SAL is .NET. And you can assign strings to background text and group boxes. So you can cha easily change the, um, the contents of background text and, and the caption of group boxes. So we now have basic support for calling functions with expressions um, passed to the compile and evaluate. Salis.net is a nice new API. With that one, you can find out if you're actually running on .NET or if you're running on Win32. And if you're running on .NET, you will get a number of other things back as well. You can, it can be WPF desktop, WPF browser. It can be a SAL library. It can be a .NET library or a web service. So you can get, you get back exactly what part of the application you are executing in. And um, you can, uh, at runtime, analyze what's going on there. I don't think I need to tell you a lot about this one. Just can code this way now. More .NET power in Team Developer 6.1. Oh, there's one actually one language feature that I just that just came to my mind, and I didn't create a slide for that yet, which is very interesting as well. And that is, we do now allow you to pass um, structures for DLLs on um, .NET as well. So if you have DLLs that use structures, you can use them on .NET as well, and you don't have to change the Win32 DLLs that you want to use on uh, .NET anymore, which is quite a, a very nice feature, really. Team Developer 6.1 also offers a lot more .NET power. We will have powerful .NET integration features. For that, please come back in October and see our Team Developer 6.1 Sneak Peek 2 webinar. And join us for our Worldwide Developers Conferences unify.com for details. We are coming to Stockholm, Hamburg, London, Paris, Washington, D.C. area, um, Sacramento, California area, Toronto, Canada, and then also later to um, Latin America. So join us for that. A quick summary on TD6.1. A new high productivity IDE new and enhanced high usability GUI features, powerful new .NET integration features that allow it to leverage investments into TD code and into other .NET code. So here we are with questions and answers. There are a number of um, questions already here. Um, one person has asked me to send him the presentation. Actually, I don't send you the presentation. We, I'm recording this webinar, and this webinar will be available for live viewing on YouTube from tomorrow. Another question is um, from Victor Marrero. Any limitation on the number of rows that can be exported to Excel from a grid? I'm thinking, I'm thinking about memory limits. Hmm, that's really something that I cannot answer at the moment um, that I need to research and come back to you. I don't know that from by the help. Right, uh, right from the top of my head. So if you have questions, please enter them into the Q&A tool. Otherwise, see you at the developers conferences and of course, during the next webinars. So doesn't look like a lot of questions are coming in there. So thank you again for joining us. Make sure to watch the or read the TD6.1 blog on blog.unify.com and see the DEFCON details on unify.com. Thank you. Have a great day and a great afternoon. Goodbye.